Welcome back to Duke's Copy TV. I'm Elaine Stenson, and today we're going to be looking at deaths in emerging markets. I'm joined in the studio now by Egon Borfeld, who's managing partner with the Forum Finance Group. Egon, you're very welcome. So Thank why you. is emerging market debt so attractive to investors right now? Well, Elaine, as a private client asset manager, we have a very significant amount invested in fixed income for our clients. And the, the current situation is that the short-term rates are at zero or near zero rates uh, at the, the US Treasuries, for instance, which made them from a risk-free return to effectively a return-free risk. And uh, the emerging market debt is, is a market where you are still getting reasonable yields. And over the last five or 10 years, what has changed very dramatically relative to the developed markets is that in the emerging market uh, debt markets, the credit quality has improved enormously. So all of those countries have much better balance sheets and um, are still paying very reasonable yields, uh, well above uh, what you're getting anywhere in the developed markets. Okay, and what are the different types of emerging market debt? So there are a couple of ways of investing in, in, in emerging market debt. One is to invest in what is dollar denominated debt. So you, you are really primarily concerned about the credit quality, but also about the US Treasury yield and the spread to, uh, with that uh, yield. Um, the other one, it would be local currency debt where you get the similar thing as the dollar denominated one, but you get the added opportunity or uh, challenge perhaps or risk uh, of the local currency. So that debt is, is denominated in the local currencies of the various countries, uh, which can be a very attractive element because those currencies can uh, become stronger relative to the euro or sterling or even the dollar. And what kind of issues might you see that keep cropping up? In the emerging market debt, it's mostly sovereign debt or quasi-sovereign debt. So you would get uh, a Russian uh, railway company or uh, an Indian railway company or, or um, Argentinian uh, sovereign debt or Brazilian sovereign debt, where the government is issuing debt in the same, same way that, uh, that you would see in the, in the developed markets. Okay. And, you are, and you are currently getting, that's why it's really of great interest to us, you are, you are getting much better qu uh, credit quality than you were in the past, and yet you're still getting a three, four, five percent uh, upside or, or more paid more for for your uh, debt that you are buying as a, as an investor. Okay, and do you think there's any negative aspects to investing in emerging market debt? Well, like investing in anything, there are plenty of risks. Um, I think the real the it's it's all about risk and reward. And I think the, the risks are that uh, clearly there, are, there is always political risk. There are lots of these countries are not always as stable as we perhaps perceive uh, the developed markets uh, to be. Although many would say rather ironically now that uh, countries such as France, Belgium, Italy, Greece, uh, you know, you, you may well question how, how predictable their governments are these days. Um, so there are, there are risks and I would say the primary risk is the US Treasury yield because that will be the sort of alternative that people look at. Uh, so when you see the US Treasury yield going up, or people think it's going up, which, we, which is something that happened recently, then that immediately is to the detriment of the other alternative, the emerging market debt. So that is, that is a threat that one needs to watch very closely. The other one um, that is of great concern to us, obviously, is, is the liquidity. The market has, in fact, grown enormously over the last uh, decade. I mean, the, the, the emerging market debt market is now almost as big as the entire US uh, investment grade debt market. So, so it really has grown quite substantially, but it's still a market where liquidity is an issue. If, so if you get outflows, investors selling, you will see, you will see that uh, having a very bad effect on, on those prices. It's not quite as deep as some other markets. Yet. Okay, and where do you stand on exotic debt at the moment? So exotic debt is very exotic and exciting. Uh, and when I think of exotic debt, I'm thinking of debt for, issued by countries such as Cuba, Korea, uh, Sudan. Yeah. And these, these, are, uh, these are defaulted sovereign debt, which are uh, trading at uh, 
five, ten cents on the dollar. So you can buy them for five or ten cents on the dollar. And when you get a restructuring in one of those countries, the, the debt forgiveness deal will then result in a valuation of that debt that you bought for five or ten cents to go up close to five times. So it's, a, it's something for the uh, investors with more risk appetite and, uh, and who are willing to take a very long-term view. So I wouldn't uh, put that in the, uh, generally in clients' portfolios unless I felt the client was quite comfortable with a small position uh, in that area. Egan, thank you for joining me in the studio today. And that's all from me at the moment, but do tune back later for more from the Duke Scopy TV team. Bye for now.